Hello YouTube, you're watching Drone Dude, and today we're going to talk about this little guy. And not this little guy, but this little guy. This is the Spectrum Receiver, uh, 6 channel. And uh, I'm just going to give you guys a, a short uh, receiver kind of tutorial, um, the basics of how a receiver works and how you plug it up. I know there's plenty of good tutorials out there, but I figured I'd add to the bunch. So uh, let's get started. So the reason I'm calling this a PNP tutorial, uh, which stands for plug and play or plug and fly, uh, which would be PNF uh, if you're using Hobby King, um, is because I'm not going to go into a full and extensive setup, um, but I'm just going to talk about uh, how everything uh, works with a PNP plane uh, and how the receiver uh, is set up uh, with the proper arrangements uh, such as ailerons, elevator, rudder, uh, and throttle. Uh, and it should be a quick uh, kind of little lesson on that. I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, and here we go. So the way we uh, operate a quad receiver is slightly different than the way we operate a airplane receiver. And today we're going to be talking about airplane receivers. And we're going to be doing that with the Durfly SkyMule. So what is a receiver? Well this is a receiver. Uh, this is the Spectrum 6 channel receiver. Uh, what a receiver does is it sends signals to servos which are uh, geared mechanisms uh, that allow you to have movement uh, in a single direction. So I'll give you an example of that. Receivers basically control the entirety of your plane. So, uh, depending on the number of channels that your plane uh, needs to fly, uh, depends on how many channels there are uh, in the receiver. So, basically what I mean by that is this is a six channel receiver. So, I can have ailerons, elevator, rudder, gear, auxiliary one, and throttle. So let's go ahead and talk about uh, different channels. And here's the throttle channel. The throttle takes the input of the remote and turns it into the amount of RPM that the motor spins when you uh, push the throttle to a particular position. Now, what actually controls the throttle input of the motor is an ESC, and there can be different kinds of ESCs. They may like, look like this, or they could look like this. This is a typical aircraft ESC. What an ESC does is determines, uh, based on the input of the remote through the receiver, how fast the motor should be spinning. Next up the line is the aileron port. The aileron port controls the aileron servos. Typically, there's two servos on either wing that control the pitch of the ailerons. The ailerons control the roll of the plane, so roll left or roll right in flight, and uh, is very important flying characteristic. Now, there can be different forms of these. Let's say you have a plane uh, with elevons, which means uh, the elevator and ailerons are in the same port. Um, it can get a little bit more complicated. Uh, however, in this traditional four-channel plane, aileron controls the up or the movement of the ailerons. Next up, we have the elevator port. The elevator channel controls the elevator. Uh, what the elevator does is pitches the plane upward or pitches the nose of the plane downward. Uh, this port and channel controls the servo that uh, will actuate the uh, servo and the uh, sorry elevator up and down. Then we have the rudder port, same idea. Uh, the rudder is controls the yaw of the plane and uh, is controlled by a servo, typically one servo. Um, the elevator is typically one servo as well. And 
And finally, you get to our two auxiliary ports. Now, there's actually one auxiliary port, which is called AUX1. However, these two ports are free to do whatever you want with. All of these ports do are actuate servos like the rest of the ports. Depending on how you set up channels determines how these two ports um, are activated through the servos. At the moment, I have the gear and the AUX1 port set up for different servo actions. The gear port is set up for this servo I have mounted in the side that will uh, be able to push out a parachute. Uh, it cannot open the door of the Sky Mule uh, because it's not strong enough. However, uh, it does have quite a, a bit of function. And then I have the AUX1 port uh, programmed for dropping uh, bombs, underwing bombs, and uh, these are the servos that I have mounted under the wings. Uh, there will be a video on that in the future when I get it up and flying, um, but that's what I have it currently connected to. Now when you start up a model like this, uh, the ESCs are going to make a sound and that means they are calibrated and ready to go. Uh, you also watch the propellers closely and they will twitch slightly, uh, which means that the connection is there. Now each of these leads that are the various leads for uh, ailerons and things um, go into different places and just knowing uh, which is the right cord to plug in where on the receiver is very important. Um, it is a good idea to label uh, your cords. I don't uh, simply because I am lazy. Uh, but if you want to figure out where all of these go quite quickly, uh, wait, before you put it to get, put, before you put your model together, I recommend labeling each one of these uh, and showing where they go. Um, and you just simply plug them in uh, to the ports and uh, the throttle through the rudder um, will automatically be channel assigned to your remote. Uh, however, um, if you, uh, the, the channels could be reversed and you might have to reverse them uh, with your transmitter. Uh, now one thing that is very important when installing these wires is you'll notice that all of the brown wires are facing to the outside of the receiver. And this is very important because uh, of the way the prongs work and the way the power is distributed through the receiver. So make sure you plug in the darkest side, whether that's brown or black, uh, always pointing outward from the center of the receiver. So what power is the receiver? Well, it's obviously the battery, but it's not the battery directly. What actually powers the receiver is the battery running through the ESCs and the ESCs running into the receiver. And that is done through the throttle port. So to be able to do any binding or any uh, actions on the receiver, uh, you have to have either a battery that has a uh, three-pronged port for power or uh, a uh, ESC with a battery uh, and a three-pronged port for powering the receiver. There's tons of options you can have with a receiver like a uh, transmitter like this. Uh, this is the Spectrum DX6 Black Edition uh, and it is a six channel uh, remote for six channel receiver uh, and it's got tons of options in terms of rates and uh, I'm not going to really get into compli uh, complicated things uh, right now, I'm just going to try to keep this video short. Um, but this is a great platform uh, if you want to have multiple models uh, and uh, fly them to their fullest potential. So one important thing to know is not all receivers uh, will work with any remote. Uh, only specific receivers will work with specific remotes. This is a Spectrum receiver, and that means it'll work with any of the Spectrum range of remotes. However, if you were to get a Futaba receiver, uh, or any other kind of receiver, it would not uh, work with uh, a Spectrum or uh, whatever you're using. Um, another thing to think about when mounting your receiver is the antenna location. This and uh, The antenna should be 90 degrees apart from each other. This is actually not my mounting spot, um, but what I mean by that is that these antenna, uh, one, should be facing upward like this, and one should I, uh, be facing uh, away uh, from the uh, 90 degree angle 
uh, much like this, or it can be facing downward, like this, or outward. Uh, these are all good places to um, uh, mount the, the wires coming off of the receiver uh, for the least amount of interference uh, from the wires. Uh, and it also maximize your range uh, with your model. And so I'll go ahead and show you how I have it set up in here. So as you can see here, this wire is facing upward. And this wire goes outward and ends right over there. So right here, we have my Horizon Hobby Delta Ray. Uh, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because it does not have a, st a standard uh, traditional receiver. Uh, this receiver actually incorporates AS3X. This is a uh, beginner plane uh, and it is ready to fly, meaning that you do not have to provide your own receiver. And this is really great, uh, especially for beginners. I actually highly recommend this plane. As you can see, it definitely has seen better days. It's missing its nose. Uh, I've cracked the nose off up to this point, and I've actually cracked through the entire body. I don't know how well you can see that right there, and all the way through uh, when I let my friend fly. This thing has been pretty much invincible, um, and that's why I love it so much. Uh, as a beginner plane, it's really easy to learn how to fly. Um, but with the AS3X, you do not have the customizability that you have with something with a standard traditional receiver. Um, now, that does not mean I don't recommend this as a beginner plane uh, to teach you the basics, but once you have that down, um, you may want to look at something with a traditional receiver so you can program things and be uh, creative and add bomb drops and um, uh, your own mechanisms to your plane. Uh, you're able to adjust things uh, like rates and uh, how fast you turn and how fast you flip. Um, and that's, that's one of the real limitations of uh, something uh, that's ready to fly um, with this kind of system in it. If we look here, these are the two aileron or elevon ports because this is a um, delta wing. Uh, and uh, the remote that comes with it, which is a Spectrum DX4, is already pre-bound and pre-set up for this model. Um, and then the throttle uh, inputs are uh, already programmed into this board, and this board incorporates AS3X, or the self-level gyro, uh, into it. So I just want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, this has been my tutorial on receivers, or PNP receiver setup. Uh, and if you guys want, you can check me out on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram is lewisflies, uh, L-E-W-I-S-F-L-Y-S, -E and uh, I do post a lot of stuff on there uh, before I put it on YouTube, uh, so it'd be most updated if you would like to check that out. Go ahead. Uh, anyway guys, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you guys later.